What's up guys, it's Missy. I'm back with another SimCity Builder video. Today we're going to be talking about the contest to mayors and what the hell is going on with it. So for those of you guys who are not yet subscribed, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below if you have any questions or if you just have anything that you want to complain about to EA, feel free to use my comment section as a place to vent. Okay, so a lot of people are quitting SimCity and I do mean a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you why. Because with the latest update, they completely thrashed this game. Between the hackers, the constant problems with uh, points, and now this annoying issue with uh, more competition, we're going to talk about those three things and what's going on with the game. So let's start with hackers. Hackers have pretty much destroyed the contest of mayors. In my opinion, I don't think anybody should play competitively at this time uh, because it's just not worth it. It's not worth the time and the effort, especially so close to November. You don't want to end up spending all of your damn resources uh, trying to win on a leaderboard that you can't win on now. I'm not saying that you shouldn't compete at all. I'm saying if you are somebody who is experiencing hackers in your leaderboard or you think that there is any bit of a chance, you know, like that that person could be hacked, then I would not bother. Okay, don't waste the resources. Now, the issue with the hackers is they can just add any points numbers that they want any time during the contest. And even if you report them, SimCity doesn't do squat. Even if they remove the person from you know, the main server and put them over to the naughty island, it takes them like 10, 15 minutes to make a different city to hack. I mean, it, it really doesn't fix the problem. Banning people doesn't fix the problem, right? It just kind of puts a band-aid on that particular leaderboard, so to speak, but it doesn't actually fix the problem. What they need to do is they need to figure out their screw up. So before the milestone uh, update, we had streaks. Okay, a lot of you guys will remember that. Now, the streaks made it to where people would score a more steady score on their leaderboards. And you knew who was competing based on the, the score, the top like two, three people max. Now you're seeing that a lot of players' leaderboards are significantly higher all the way down to like 10th and 20th place. And we're going to talk about why that is just in a minute. But as far as hackers go, okay, you really need to go to EA. You need to go to SimCity's Facebook page on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, and you guys need to start complaining. Seriously, you need to start commenting and complaining about this issue because until they fix their screw up, the game's garbage. It, re it really is. Like, be when the streaks were here, they couldn't do this. They, they couldn't just adjust the points anymore. That's why you guys are seeing these ridiculous numbers on leaderboards, like 350,000 points. Another thing that they need to do is they need to uh, eliminate certain things like the clip trays giving plumb bob points. Reason being is that in order to, you know, let's say report somebody for being hacked, you have to prove that what they did is not possible to be done in a legit way. So when you see somebody jump 30,000 points the last 50 seconds of the contest to mayors, that no longer has merit in terms of them being a hacker. It doesn't mean anything, and it should. Because of the milestone assignments and being able to collect those points last minute, People can make these, you know, huge points jumps the last couple of seconds of the contest and it'd be perfectly legitimate. And it, it's going to make it really hard to determine who is a hacker and who is not, right? Same thing with those clip trays. Saving those last minute could 
jump you up on the leaderboard, which, yeah, you should do if you can. But it just makes it really hard for people to determine if you're a legit player or a hacker. SimCity really needs to fix the hacking issue. That is the biggest issue right now, is that the contest of mayors is so easy to hack right now. And the points are just... They're, they're, they're too hard to get to just have it all be thrown away to a hacker. All right, the second issue is... The uh, deduction in points. So a lot of players are experiencing situations where their points don't match up with their current leaderboard or they don't match up with their, uh, their group board. So first you have to make sure that it's not associated with you not being in the group. And a lot of these people, that's not the case. There is an instance where if you are, you know, logging in and out of a group your points are not going to match the group score. So if you log into a group, and let's say you have not done any assignments yet, while you're logged into this group, you earn 60,000 points, and it shows those 60,000 points on your group's board. And then you leave that group, and let's say you join another group and you complete 10,000 points. It's going to show 70,000 points on your total score and on your leaderboard here. But in terms of the group that you're currently in towards their group chest, that board, it's only going to show what you contributed while you were logged into the second group. When you go back to the first group, it will show your 60,000 points contributed to that group. Okay? So pay attention to what that means. If you have not left a group at all, right, you've only earned points for the group that you're logged into and you haven't left, they should match your current score. If they do not match, it's because the game screwed up and it's a glitch. And this is happening to a ton of people where uh, it's not just in their group leaderboard either. It's on their main leaderboard. Like they'll have like 3,000 points missing kind of a big deal, you know? It might not sound like a lot, but it is, especially when it comes to uh, the higher, higher level players, where, as you can see here, this top player has 227,000, and second and third place are only 10 points from each other. That's it. 10 points. So losing 3,000 points that you should have been given or whatever is a big deal, okay? So again... You guys need to start complaining vocally and publicly on their their Facebook page, their Twitter page. You need to start getting things heard. Otherwise, nothing's going to get resolved, and the game is just dying off right now. I mean, when I say a lot of people have quit, I mean a lot of people. Now, we're going to look at some of these leaderboards, and I'm going to show you guys something here. So if you guys don't remember, when we had the streaks assignments... Basically, the average score for low-level players who would stack up upgrades and complete all 75 assignments, their average score was between 180,000 and 200,000. The average score for completing all 75 assignments, plus obviously getting the, every streaks bonus, for a high-level player was 220,000. Okay, that was usually the higher end. Doesn't mean that they couldn't score higher. That was just the average, was between 205 and 220,000. Okay? Now, back then, you were lucky to see three people competing for first place. Now, you guys are seeing a lot more people basically competing for first like their their points uh like the first like i want to say 10 people of almost every leaderboard of any level are within 40 to 50 thousand points of each other okay so here we've got a 24 leaderboard top place has 171,000. now that's pretty low for a 24 board um even for back when the streaks were around but the fact that second place let first place win for less than 10,000 points, 
that either means one of two things. This person had no idea what they were doing and they used all 75 assignments and got that, that score there. Or they didn't use all 75 assignments and they just are lazy and didn't go for the win. Same thing with third place. So fourth place is 21,000 from first place. That's really not that much. It's really not. If you look at the milestone assignments, you can have you can easily have 30,000 points just sitting there uh, ready to collect and lose the last couple of seconds of the game, right? Okay, so let's go back here and let's look. Here, we've got a level 26 board and top place has 196,000, sixth place has 153,000. So within, you know, roughly 40,000 points from sixth to first place. This is a level 76 board. Top place has 206,000. Sixth place, well, fifth place has 178,000. Okay. This person's in my group, 215,000, level 62. Uh, sixth place has 148,000. Second place has 189,000. Okay, so here, this person uh, lost over what? 25-ish thousand points. So either they really did that bad or they just forfeited. This person is a level 49 and their score is 187,000 for first place. Sixth place has 129,000. So a little bit bigger of a gap there. Now, why do you think that would be? If you look here, so far, we've got the level 24 board was, you know, 171,000. Then we've got this one here at 196th. Now, here, this person's in my group. They've got 215, okay? So I know that they have a pretty good idea of how to choose their assignments. This person is level 49. Now, assuming that they weren't on the Missy's Building Guide and possibly save tickets, it could account for why their score is significantly lower. Usually what you'll see is uh, between level 30 and 50 you'll see lower scores because most of those cities are in really bad condition. You know, they're cities that people have not re uh, wanted to restart on and they have no idea what they're doing or their city's just not equipped really to put up those kinds of points without a lot of help from feeder cities or just knowledge in general of how to choose their assignments. I'm not saying that you won't have competition on a level uh, 30 to 50 board. I'm just saying the vast majority of them usually put up crappy points. Now, here's the deal. Okay, when the streaks were around, and do you guys remember when I first put out the milestone assignment uh, video, I told you guys that it was going to make choices easier. And it was going to take the difficulty of the actual competing portion, like the choosing of the assignments and investment into the contest of mayors and it was going to minimize it okay that is all true however here's the deal you know when i said the difficulty was going to go down okay think about what i just said i said that choosing the assignments the difficulty of choosing the assignments was going to go down what does that mean it means that Choices are now going to be easier. So what does that mean for people who couldn't make difficult choices? Think about it like this. Let's just say, let's say I hand you all a math assignment, okay? 
And for the last three weeks, I've been giving you guys all trigonometry, okay? Three of you out of the whole class managed to actually understand it, be good at it, and score high, right? So now I say, okay, you know what? We're going to make this easier on you guys. I'm going to give you guys basic multiplication sheets. What do you think is going to happen? Competition is going to go up, right? Because now 95 to 99% of the class understands what I'm handing them. So their scores go up. So the competition goes up, right? So that's why you're seeing the top. Two. You remember a lot of people are saying, why is it now all of a sudden so many people are competing? No, there was always people competing. Always. The difference is they actually stand a fighting chance because there's very little uh, logic provided now. So basically look at it like this. Or logic needed to score high. So look at it like this. You have your overall score for the first, what, 75, for the first 60 assignments plus your uh, 15 tickets, okay? That is what you control in the contest of mayors. You control those 75 assignments plus your milestone assignments. Now, the milestone assignments, you have to decide how many of those that you want to invest into and what you're willing to give versus what you're willing to get, right? Now, with the streaks assignments, you had to arrange your list in a very strategic way in order to benefit from those bonus points. Those bonus points accounted for 48,000 of your score plus the assignments within the streaks, right? So it was a, it was a really specific technique in order to win. That technique is no longer required in order to gain that portion of your score. So what is gonna set your score apart from everybody else's? What is gonna put you higher on the leaderboard than everybody else? Well, those 75 assignments that you're completing, you have to do those perfectly. There is no room for error. Okay, you have to arrange your list in a way where you're always scoring the max amount that you can score. Then you have to decide with the milestones, if whatever remaining milestones are there, if investing into those is worth the risk of losing. Okay, because the biggest issue is going to be hackers. You invest all this time and effort and resources and blah, 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 and then a hacker just wins. That is the biggest issue, okay? Now, if you knew 100% that everybody that you're going up against is playing legitimately, that no hacker is going to screw you up, then you have to look at the remaining milestone assignments and you have to say, is it worth it even if I do win? Even if the odds of winning are extremely high, is it worth it for me to invest all of that? Because here's the deal. A lot of these milestone assignments, the first tier, the second tier aren't too bad. But the third tier on some of these are ridiculous. Okay? Having to upgrade 60 freaking houses for any level player is ridiculous. If you're a level 99 player, that's going to cost you an enormous amount of coins and inventory. Okay. If you are lower than that, then just simply leveling up and just getting closer and closer and closer to a really difficult leaderboard and more hackers, plus having to spend all those resources is not worth it. If those points on that milestone is going to make or break you, if that is what's going to to make you win versus lose, then you probably shouldn't be doing that. Because what's probably going to happen is that means that you would only be winning by like 10,000 points. Now, knowing that so many people hold milestone uh, assignments points, knowing how many people hack, I don't 
think it's wise to risk all, you know, all of that for 10,000 points. You see where I'm going with this? If it takes that to win, then you have to look at everything that you've already invested and ask yourself, is it worth it? Is it worth the whopping 2,000 cash and 250 plat keys you're going to get? And 10, 10 uh, gold tokens. And if you lose, what, what did it cost you? Because then you have to look at the following week. Because now you have a loss. See what I'm saying? How many gold keys did you invest into upgrading war cards? How many war cards upgrades did you waste? How many coins, tokens, tickets, boosters, inventory, cash, time, epics, experience? It costs a lot to compete in these you know, these contests to mayors. So the hacking issue is a big, big, big problem, okay? Now, if you're still competing, regardless of the hackers, then you have to be very, very careful on what you're investing versus what you're, you know, going to, when you're going to forfeit. Normally, as long as nobody was ever hacked, back when we had the streaks, Unless you were in a position where the odds of losing were higher than the odds of winning, I always told people to go for the win. Always. Because you have to look at what you've already invested. But with the game the way that it currently is, you might be leaning more towards forfeiting than not forfeiting sometimes. Okay? Now, the leaderboards are a lot more competitive and they're going to continue to be that way because of the fact that there's a lot of room for error now and you have those milestone assignments that pretty much the vast majority of people are able to complete right as long as they put forth the effort so what a lot of people are doing that don't know what a lot of people that don't know how to play a lot of how they're putting up high scores is they're doing basic on the first 75 assignments and then they're completing the milestone assignments and it's costing them a fortune. So what sets you apart from them? Well, you're doing really good on your milestone assignments or sorry, on your regular assignments and then you're putting forth the effort to do what's needed for let's say half of the milestones. So it's putting your score and their score right around the same ballpark, right? But imagine if you did really good on the regular assignments and you contributed as much to the milestones as they did, then you would pass them. But the issue is that, is that required to win? Is it worth it, even if you can? That is the fine line that you have to draw between what to invest into the milestones and what not to. And then you got to hope that a hacker don't blow you out of the water. So right now, the contest of mayors is absolutely destroyed. You're lucky to get the points that you put up anyway. Uh, you're going to see a lot of that happening. You know, putting up points and not getting credit for them. That's another bogus thing that's going on. Um, the competition is going to stay like this pretty steady because of the way that it's set up now. And... Until you guys go to their Facebook page or Twitter page and start really, really, really complaining, I don't see anything changing anytime soon. So hopefully everybody can get their butt on the internet and start emailing them and start blowing them up on social media because if you don't, nothing's going to change. Good luck to you guys this week. Uh, if you have anything, you know, glitch-wise that you want to let me know about, or uh, questions, put it down in the comments section. I'm more than happy to read it or uh, respond back to you.